We are all experiencing uncertainty and powerlessness on a global scale unknown in our lifetime. Isolation and the very threat of our existence have brought us face to face with ourselves. We desperately need to find ways to feel safe, connected, protected and hopeful. We share our stories to find the collective wisdom of our experiences, to guide each other through this age fraught with fear and anxiety. I am a Métis woman, born and raised on Vancouver Island. Sometimes I think I was born anxious. As a child, I had leg Perthes disease, a disease that affects the hip. I felt isolated and different from other kids. For a while, I was in a body cast. My earliest memories are being stared at, pointed at, and feeling helpless. When I did go out, my mom pulled me around in a wagon. It was a childhood full of doctor's visits, hospitals, casts, splints, and crutches, feeling out of control. Those early feelings of being less than, or not good enough, followed me through my lifetime. Life is challenging enough, but to have anxiety is really hard. I've learned how to adapt. I avoid places that are overstimulating or too busy, places I don't feel safe. I feel like anxiety has robbed me of many pleasures in life, like traveling, seeing different cultures and experiences. I've learned ways to manage over the years and have had to step out of my comfort zones, mostly for my children but it hasn't been easy. I feel like it's a constant battle of good and evil, of peace and war. It's exhausting. Anxiety is about trying to control things or situations. I can't control the uncontrollable, but I can find ways to help my, find my calm and peace during these storms. I was born a fifth generation settler on Turtle Island, known today as Canada. I was adopted by an English couple and raised in Japan for my first 18 years. I did not know where I belonged or where my community was. I felt like an outsider. I was a clumsy, impulsive, inattentive and hyperactive child. My mother was often overwhelmed and emotionally and physically unpredictable. I became hypervigilant of both real and perceived dangers at an early age was very sensitive to outside stimuli and unexpected events. Excessively outwardly focused, I began disregarding my gut instinct and the messages my body was giving me. My life was run by fear of not having my needs met, of not being wanted, of being misunderstood. One minute I was full of boundless energy and confidence, the next, I felt overwhelmed, helpless, and hopeless. My coping mechanism in childhood was sugar. Then it became cigarettes, substances, and medication. I had little capacity for thinking of others. I was too busy trying to stay mentally and physically afloat. Trying to integrate and maintain self-care was a full-time job. The way I find peace is in the forest, in nature. The trees don't judge, they welcome me and invite me into their world. Walking or riding my bike in the forest is grounding for me. Sometimes I sit and lean against a tree. It's like a hug from a grandmother. The hug drains away anxiety, self-doubt, and helps me to feel okay. Trees accept me for who I am. When I sit beside a tree, I feel the energy swirling through my body. It recharges and uplifts me. I feel part of the greater picture. My journey with anxiety has taken me on a path to help and support others. Sometimes now, I even see anxiety as my gift. I have empathy and compassion, and I can teach others the tools to help manage anxiety. One of them, getting out for walks and being out in the forest. We are not alone. I never could have imagined that going for regular walks in nature would begin my recovery journey. From such a simple activity, a miraculous process unfolded. 
One breath at a time, one step at a time, I began reconnecting to my body. My mind quietened in the stillness of the forest. The silence created an inner spaciousness which allowed what is deep within me to bubble up and be heard. A palpable feeling of love and calm and safety began to grow inside of me. I slowed down and looked around. When I would walk the path of a nearby labyrinth, the trees surrounding the clearing became my elders, holding sacred space for me on my inner journey. The falling leaves called out to just let go. The clouds whizzing by shouted, this too shall pass. The sparkles bouncing off the sun-reflected water reminded me that I am more than just this body. The sun cloaking my body with its warmth gave me comfort. I felt like I was home, like I belonged. Nature is my trusted companion, my silent witness, as I learn to finally be with myself and my feelings. Nature is my sanctuary, my temple without walls. Nature is where I go to reconnect with that all-pervasive, benevolent spiritual energy that exists within and around me. Today I have peace in my life because nature is my higher power. I am abstinent from all my addictions. Whenever I get caught off guard and begin reverting to my default ways of reacting, I ask for guidance and acceptance. We're living through a time when the human collective consciousness is overwhelmed with fear, uncertainty and anxiety. The self-care tools that we have accumulated over our lifetimes have helped us to cope during this ongoing pandemic which has divided and isolated many of us. By reaching out to each other and being in nature, we can find hope and reconnection. Life always has its uncertainties, but we will strive to remain grounded, like the strong roots of an ancient tree. Breathing slowly, mind at rest, tears well up, from feeling blessed, sinking deeper, letting go, aligned with love and trusting flow. This lifelong ache within my soul brings me to you and makes me whole. There is joy. In the simple things When I look up at the sky And clouds are slowly drifting by This can give my spirit wings 